Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. Let's get uh let's get this turned off here for a second. How you doing, Burl? Good evening, everyone. This is Randy Schiffer, Digital Wood Carvers. Thanks for joining us tonight. I am co-hosting with Burl Tishner, owner of Digital Wood Carver. Burl's out in the shop again. Uh, hey, Burl, how's things going this evening? It's going good. Um, you know, earlier we were talking, Laney. We've probably done the most preparing for this show, but uh, almost seems to be the least prepared. Uh, so that must mean we've got an exciting show uh, for tonight. And uh, we're going to start off, we're going to do uh, kind of a, two different things tonight. And um, one of the things that uh, uh, this afternoon, um, I get a wild idea, a crazy idea, and we're going to try something new today, um, this evening, try and get people to do the shows. Uh, what we want to do is, at the end of the show, we're going to have two special announcements. So uh, encourage people to stay for the whole show, but also uh, encourage people to uh, join the show. So whether you're a customer, because I know we get a lot of customers that uh, join us for these shows, but also if you're looking to become a customer, uh, uh, a special announcement for each one of you um, this evening. So uh, stay with us. Um, generally, I know last week we did a good job keeping it around 50 minutes. So, I mean, that's not terribly long. Um, so if you'll stay with us the whole show, we've got a couple special things that we want to do at the end um, of that show. Absolutely. And uh, tonight uh, is a special show. We are going to uh, actually give you guys a little bit of a video tour uh, of our shop. Over the last you know, year and stuff, uh, as our shop has been growing and everything, we've been capturing little clips here and there and stuff. And uh, we're able to kind of dig those out of our archives and put them together just to show you uh, the Digital Wood Carver facility and how things are going and, and what we're looking like and stuff. And so we're going to get off to that first. And then we're going to get into talking about the laser. So what I'm going to yeah. do is, uh, if you could, I know the laser is running in the background. Everybody can uh, uh, tell that we got the laser running. Could you, uh, for this first segment, if we could pause that laser, if I could have you pause that laser and we go into the video, so that way we can have a little discussion about the shop tour. Yep. Give me uh, a second here. Go ahead. There we go. We'll get it cranked back up here in a minute when we get to show everybody the laser. But uh, I'd like to let's see if we can switch on over to our uh, dual screen here and uh, bring in our video. We'll be, put Burl and I on the side here. Uh, so for the first part of this, we're going to give you a bit of a video tour. This is pre-recorded video, and uh, we've done our best to kind of piece it together from all the clips that we've gathered uh, the past few years as, as, as the things have grown. So hopefully it, I did a good good enough job editing, but um, be sure to stay yeah. because we are, as Burl said, we have two great announcements at the end of the show. So you've got to stay tuned for those, uh, and and uh, and trust me, it's absolutely worth it. There's some record breaking announcements that uh, for a first a couple of firsts for Digital Wood Carver. So uh, stay yep. tuned. Yes, Lane. <laughs> And if you want to keep your uh, finger on that pause button as we go through this video, I'd like to kind of explain, you know, a little bit about our manufacturing. We certainly don't want to brag, but uh, certainly we've been blessed. And uh, I know a lot of you customers out there, or if you're not even a customer, you're looking to become a customer, you kind of want to know a little bit about Digital Wood Carver. Is this just a, you know, uh, you know, out of their garage? And certainly we've had humble startings. Um, some of the first machines, uh, you know, I built in, in a basement. But uh, certainly from that time to now, we've grown. So hopefully if you remember uh, some of those early days of uh, customers picking up and um, picking up in a garage. And certainly, you know, even today, uh, my shop isn't our manufacturing. And most people, uh, very, very few customers have ever seen our, our shop. So we thought we'd do a little bit of tour. Um, but we've got some video clips of it and show you the uh, different things that we do. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've really grown with some equipment and stuff. So Laney, if you don't mind hitting play, keep your finger on that pause in case I need to stop and explain a little bit more uh, about what's going on in the video. Absolutely. Let's go ahead. And and Laney did a fabulous job on it, by the way. 
This we're certain just heading into the door. You don't see much of it, but we did just pick up a electric forklift. Got a couple of those. Our, our raw material comes in this side. This is kind of our fabrication area. Some tubing there. That's our brake press, our welding. Uh, guys welding some product there. Cincinnati laser there. That's a 2000 watt laser, and we'll see a little more of that in detail here later in the video. But Adam there is picking off parts. There's Terry looking at some uh, racks of material coming off of the uh, out of the powder boat. Uh, powder coat booth there's that laser bro <laughs> yeah this is a 2000 watt laser uh we're talking about lasers so it's kind of unique that we show a big boy and uh, also our six watt uh this is a 2000 watt this sucker can cut up to probably 38 half inch thick steel what it is cutting right there is a quarter inch thick um mild sheet steel those are four by eight or five by ten sheets of steel and uh, if you look real close, that is a piece that goes on the digital wood carver underneath the underneath side. So uh, we try to cut out all the uh, pieces and, and fabricate as much as we can. So that's the laser. It has two pallets um, on it where we can do one sheet, and you'll see it as it as the camera spans here. Um, it can do that full sheet all at once. Yeah. Now, bro, I'm going to pause it here for a second. You know, yep. ladies and gentlemen, um, when it comes to uh, the parts and everything, the one thing I'm proud about Digital Woodcarver over, I think it's been, what, now the last year and a half, most of the production is brought in-house now with this large laser. I'll never forget when it came in on the semi-truck uh, and setting it up. It, it's a huge monster of a machine. But this allows uh, Digital Woodcarver now to manufacture their stands and uh, major parts of their units and everything. Uh, with not only that laser, but uh, with the addition of uh, their powder coating booth, everything is now kind of brought in house, which is phenomenal. It's kind of all under one roof. All right, bro. I just wanted to add. That yeah. Up. Yes, Laney. Uh, I remember that day. Um, you was fortunate enough to be up here in Indiana. That uh, that laser weighs about twenty three hundred pounds, and um, that's a, a big chunk of metal that you have to move. Move, but it has changed our manufacturing. We can do things in-house uh, where we had to pay other people to do that. Um, what you see in the background is welding. We don't have a lot of welded parts on our product, but we do uh, manufacture for other people. We'll get into that a little bit later. So if you see some collars that you never uh, don't recognize or some pieces, uh, that's probably due to the fact that uh, we do some outside work along with uh, Digital Woodcarver, all of our products. This is a brake press. We just got this a couple months ago. Adam's very proud of that. Uh, it's a 150 ton uh, brake press, has a CNC, the stops and programming there on the screen. Uh, safety guards, you know, that uh, uh, help, uh, you know, keep your fingers out of there, uh, light curtains. And uh, every, one of the things that you, yep. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, I was gonna say, and every part is inspected by Adam and all to make sure for precision and accuracy. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the guys do an excellent job of that. And, and Adam in particular is uh, um, what is the quality of that. This is our uh, powder coat booth. Uh, we just added this addition back this past winter. That's uh, kind of a separate building that produces a lot of dust. So uh, we didn't want that dust on our fabrication area with a laser. There's two ovens, a small one, and then a large one that's actually a gas uh, powered. And then um, this is our gentleman here uh, that's putting on that uh, powder. That is uh, static electricity that will uh, cause that powder to stick to those metals. You throw in that oven, that uh, temperature inside that oven, it has to be at uh, 400 degrees or close to around there. And here's a component there. And those blue parts are for carts. Uh, we do some outside work. Why don't you pause it there for a second, uh, right, Laney? Let's back right up about here. Oop, yeah, I'm those blue, yeah, those blue parts, uh, Goodwill Industries uh, here in Indianapolis. A uh, good friend of mine works for them, and those are some carts that uh, they needed. Um, they do outside work for people, and they'll do their production, put their production parts in there. But we had an order of that, so that allows us with this manufacturing capacity to do work for other pieces. But what, what are we getting an echo, Laney? No. You, can you hear me okay? Okay. I can hear you fine. Yeah, what we're looking at here, you go ahead and hit play. 
Um, we're, we're looking at our fabrication area. This is a turning center here. It's a pretty amazing piece of equipment, has 10 or 20 tools, automatic tool changer. This thing will screen making parts. We have a turning center. That's a bandsaw uh, that uh, we can cut the tubing and stuff with there. Uh, we bring it in raw material and it goes out the backside there from the powder coat. You see the rack there, um, the blue carts there. This is our digital woodcarver side. Uh, we're showing a little bit of the assembly area. That's a laser, a larger laser we actually use in our production at a 90 watt laser. Here's some control boxes, Rick and uh, Jeremy there. Uh, you see some different stages of the digital wood carver, our shelves. There's a mini being built. Jeremy's uh, wiring up a pendant and uh, some other electrical com components there. These I have workstations. The booths look organized. They look good. The guys are good. <laughs> Well, they did know a little bit ahead that they had to uh, clean up for the video for everybody too. So they did a good job. That's an electrical box. Yeah. That's their electrical department right there where that little wiring machine down there that spits out that wire yeah. is it is awesome. Yeah, that's a cool little, it'll cut the lean strip, strip the ends for them. Um, so they don't have to just, just put the wire on. There's Terry working on some electrical boxes, getting them ready for people. Why don't you pause there too, uh, yep. Laney? That's our uh, DWC 5100. We obviously believe in our product. We actually have one in our production and produce a lot of stuff on the, um, uh, that's our four by eight unit. Works really well and, and uh, we feel confident enough that uh, we'll produce product with that. Uh, and we can also do demos out of our manufacturing area. Absolutely. And we'll do a future show uh, or a video of that more in depth later. Absolutely. And for those of you that aren't aware, uh, other than our 2440, which you guys and girls uh, saw the week before last and our mini carver, which you saw last week, yeah. we have our yeah. four by four, which we call our 4848 model. And we have our 5100, which is our four by eight, which you see here. Both are monster machines and they're just phenomenal. Um, I wish I, I wish yeah. my was bigger than 12 by 24. <laughs> All right, let's yeah. move on to uh, let's see what else we got here. Oops, I'm pushing the wrong screen there. Let's get that. Uh, <laughs> there is a laser, a 90 watt laser I talked about. These are units uh, that you see there. They're in stages of being packed up. That one's showing a laser and uh, that's on a crate. There's one boxed up ready to go out uh, in the assembly area. Matter of fact, those two units there are being shipped. Why don't you hit pause there just for a second. Yep, we talked right. about earlier being able to do um, manufacturing for other people. And we had opportunity this last year, summer, fall. Um, most of you know my history is I did work for uh, Wood Miser for 26 years, an excellent company to work for. And uh, we partnered up with them and then did a project. Um, it's called the Slab Miser and certainly go to their website, Wood Miser's website, if you're interested in that. That is a product I do not sell, I do not service. It strictly goes through them. They are the, the owner of the, of the design and they sell it, uh, but we do manufacture. And one of the things that we wanted to do is uh, with all this equipment, um, with a, just a digital wood carver, we didn't utilize it at all. Um, so this allows us to do a little bit of outsourcing and also uh, make sure during different uh, seasons that uh, we stay busy and keep the guys busy and grow as a company overall so that's one area there um we, we're still a little bit crowded we'd like to build some uh build on uh this summer uh, if it dries out and uh economy and everything gets uh, back going we'll uh, we'll add on to the building so go ahead and hit play and let's see what else we got here absolutely and for those of you that are new to woodworking and everything and uh are curious as what a slab miser is uh think of a router plane on steroids it's for surfacing big slabs of trees and all. And it's just a phenomenal machine. All right, let's yeah. see what we have here. I believe that that's a electrical motor has a five inch cutting head, um, but it, it's huge. Here's the guys. From Digital Wood Carver, big thanks. There's the crew. <laughs> All right. 
and ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, um, we, we do consider, uh, I mean, of course the company, I consider it to kind of be family owned, even though not everybody in that, you know, that group is, is family members and all, but they're all like family, just like our customers, uh, yeah. that, that are owned digital wood covers. Yeah. We consider uh, digital wood cover a big family environment, uh, the support and all that we provide. Uh, so if you're new to digital wood cover, if you're looking to get into CNC, join the family. We'd love to have you. All right, bro. Yes, so Delaney. The, we appreciate everybody indulgence there with our manufacturing, but I know a lot of people out there are curious about it. Gives them a little bit of a uh, glimpse there on that. So, yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about some lasers. But before we talk about lasers, Let's we want to make an announcement. Yep. Go Let's ahead. Your question first, Burl. Um, the uh, question uh, comes from Kevin. Says, do you make the 48 by 96 in-house, uh, our 5100 model? Uh, can we explain exactly how that works? Yes. We do not manufacture the base unit itself. Um, it is purchased on the uh, 4 by 8 machines. And then what we do is we, we do some modifications to it. Um, and one of the biggest things is we put all our controls on it. So whether you have the 18 by 24 or the 24 by 40, um, it uses the same TNG control software, VCarve Pro, Aspire Design software. So, but the base unit itself, we do not manufacture there, but we do put our controls on it um, so that as you grow, uh, and we, we got a lot of people that are do that. They'll start out with the mini, go to the 2440, and um, or the 2440 um, clear up to the uh, four by eight machines. And we've been selling uh, quite a few of those. I'm trying to think over the last uh, year. Um, I don't know the exact numbers. I'd, I'd hate to quote it. I, one to two a month is what we're selling on those. Um, but uh, they do well. We've got a lot of customers out there that uh, use them. Um, people, when they buy that, generally are, um, you know, production, production oriented. Absolutely. And Burl, uh, there's two other quick questions. One is, uh, is there some place to see these in person? And uh, uh, this is our opportunity to, uh, and thank you, for, Teresa, for asking that question. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to shout out uh, a couple of things. One, you could absolutely come to uh, Martinsville, Indiana by appointment to our home office uh, and uh, schedule a demo. Uh, if you'd like, and uh, again, Martinsville, Indiana, but we do have, uh, we, and we support our, our resellers, our, our retailers. Uh, we have units uh, in the Woodcraft stores in Indianapolis, uh, Appleton. Oh, uh, St. Bro, Louis. St. Louis, thank you very much. And uh, yeah. we have uh, Klingspore Woodworking in North Carolina. Uh, we've got two Woodmiser dealers. ASC, uh, yeah. Here. Is that Wisconsin uh, and North Carolina, North Carolina. So any, yeah. uh, you can check out our website, digitalwoodcarver.com. Uh, at the bottom of the website, there is a link for the dealers. Uh, you can find a dealer near you, uh, or you could absolutely give us a call at our toll free number, 833-392-2621 extension one and set up an appointment for a demo. If you're in the Indiana area and like to come out uh, to uh, the Martinsville and, and, and see one of the units we're running things. Yeah, Laney, one other thing I want to put to that is, um, you know, if you aren't close to one of those dealers or us here in Indiana, um, we have had customers. I can't, I won't give out customers' names without uh, pre-arranging it, but we have had customers in different parts of the, the country, 5,100 um, owners and also uh, 1824s and 2440s. Uh, that will do demos for us too, um, but those have to be, once again, scheduled and uh, make arrangements for you. Absolutely. Okay. This is it, bro. This is the last, uh, the first thing I would like to say to Antonio, stay tuned to the end of the video. Stay tuned to the end of the video. There's two major announcements for customers and yep. customers, non-customers. Uh, so there's yep. something for everyone. Stay tuned to yep. the end of the video and uh, we're going to make two announcements and it might just fall into what you're talking about there. And uh, bro, someone loved uh, the shop and they had a question. Was that a repurposed hanger? <laughs> it looked big. <laughs> uh, no, it it is not. Um, that that was a, a that's original building the the dome there. It, de it definitely looks like a, a hanger, but uh, it, it was not. Um, that is my my brother's facility as far as the property, and we leased the buildings off of him. Um, that he has two two buildings there that we use, but no, it was not a. Uh, 
<laughs> hanger. Uh, that's a good story, though. Uh, when it comes to that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, with Digital Wood Carver, if you ever have any questions and we don't get a chance to answer them uh, in these live broadcasts, which we try to answer a few here and there, so keep posting them and I'll, we'll try to get to them. If I don't, I will answer them in the comments for the video after the broadcast. Girl's going to crank the laser back up here. Uh, and you can always email us or call. Email sales at digitalwoodcarver.com or call us toll free at 833-DWC-CNC1. That's 392 392- Two six two one extension number one. All right, Burl, tell us a little bit about what you got running over there. Well, let me let me, let me flip the screen here so we can actually see what what what's running, running here. here. Uh, I'll, try I'll try to tell you a little, little bit of the history of the digital wood carver, or I mean the six watt laser. And I apologize, people. I'm getting a major feedback here, so it's hard for me to speak. Uh, I don't normally stutter like that, but uh, um, I was a little bit hesitant to put the laser on our digital wood carver. By the way, the six watt laser is capable of running on the uh, 18 by 24 and the 2440 uh, units. I was a little hesitant uh, to put this on because uh, you can purchase and we do sell 60 and 90 watt lasers. But, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we decided to do that, uh, put this little unit on. It is a little diode laser that mounts to the front of your um, router mount bracket there. Two thumb screws. We don't leave this unit on while we're routing. Obviously, it's a little more, a uh, little bit of money there to uh, have hanging, just vibrating. I apologize about the cable. We just put this on there temporary. You would have that cable. You could string it up with the cat track. Uh, but for us, just putting this on for our demo or show, we left it hanging there. But... Uh, I was a little bit hesitant of, of what you can do with larger lasers, but uh, since we have a lot of our customers that went with us, it's been a, a just a phenomenal. I've even got a couple, a couple of customers that told me that said, "Hey, you know, I just love it for the laser part of it." So, since we've done it, um, it's been a good asset to the um, different, uh, um, you know, the two products that we that we sell and add-on feature. One of the things that I think is uh, is good is you know people come up to me and say you know should i buy a laser or should i buy a, a router and my answer is really both um, they both have their places uh, they both have unique things that they can do um, you know the laser uh, is uh, and i call it a, a wood burner but it is a very cool wood burner you can get some detail here's a piece that i had ran earlier laney made that design up and you can see just the the detail there um, let me zoom out and, and show you a couple other pieces. Uh, that machine is running. It's uh, what you hear noise-wise is a fan. There is uh, air blowing through that. It's a diode laser, very small piece there. But that fan is running through there. That keeps that uh, laser uh, head cool. Um, but here's a piece that Laney had done a, uh, probably a couple years now. Uh, on that, you can see some details, some very cool stuff. Uh, the laser beam itself is about five thousand. So, if you can imagine, instead of a you know quarter inch or even a sixteenth inch bit, uh, five thousandths is very very fine. So, you can, excuse me, you can get some very detailed lines and stuff like that. Uh, uh, one of the one things of the that that uh, just I mean, as of recent. We've been limited, and I'm going to turn it back over to Laney and talk a little bit about the software and some of the cool things on uh, the software. And uh, we'll we'll come back and actually show you a little more about what this new software or what they're looking at releasing uh, can do. But Laney, if you can uh, pull up this, uh, are you still with me? I am still with you, Burl. So yeah, uh, let me uh, flip the. We're going to go ahead and flip the screen around here. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. All right. And up to, yeah. Go ahead. If you want to pop up the software, up to now, we've been able to basically do two dimensional. And if you can kind of go over that just real quick of what two, two dimensional is, uh, Laney, and then we'll get into, um, you know, what, what you got on your picture there. Can you, I, I'm sorry to put you on the spot. If you no, can do no. a little text or something. Yeah, we're good. Uh, so, uh, with the two-dimensional, and I'll just uh, come over here and uh, pop it up over here on the corner. 
uh, we used to be able to bring in clip art or work with um, tech, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, and when we were using the laser, when we are using the laser, not when we were, when we are using the laser, uh, doing a two-dimensional, whether it be text or a clip art, we would use a profile toolpath if the laser was following the line, engraving along the line. And then we would do a pocket toolpath with our laser tool if it was doing an engraving between the lines. Um, the... One of the great things uh, that is coming down the pike, and I'll, when we get back with Burl, uh, we'll see uh, if he's heard any rumor of a timeline and stuff. But digital, uh, not digital wood cover, but Vetric is coming out with a new module, a laser module. Uh, and the laser module will be a laser cut and fill, which you see the icon here on the screen, as well as a laser picture. And that was one of the things that I've been waiting for is being able to do the laser pictures on the digital wood carvers. Uh, and Vetric is answering that call to action there. Uh, let's talk about the laser cut and fill. The laser cut and fill um, with the laser tool uh, basically takes the power of the laser from zero to 100% uh, and anything in between 10%, 20%, so on and so forth for that laser power. And then your feed rate, your inches per minute, uh, your feed rate, your moving speed, and the number of passes. And then you're able to do a cut on the outside of the line, inside of the line, on the line, or even kind of a, a hatch fill, a cross hatch fill. Uh, so basically, almost, if you think about it, if you're working with Vetric or if you work with Vetric, it's kind of got that uh, profile toolpath fill but also that quick engraving fill with this hatch and uh, you know hatch fill option as well. Uh, you can adjust your uh, step over. Uh, you can adjust your allowance uh, depending on if you're cutting on the outside or the inside of the line. Uh, but when you're cutting on the line, there is no allowance. If you're doing a cross hatch fill, you can adjust your step over and the angle of that cut. And for me, you know, everybody's different and everything. I like a 90 or a 45 degree, uh, you know, hatch angle when I'm laser engraving. But you can also do a cross hatch pattern, which is a back and forth uh, a series of X's and stuff. So that is going to be the laser cut and fill. And this is not out yet. But this is a sneak peek of what's to come from Vetric. Uh, now, when we get into the exciting things is the laser picture. For those of you that might have been with Vetric or have the Vetric software, uh, in Vetric 9 and 9.5, uh, the tools over here on the right, they added two photo tools, uh, a picture editor and a crop bitmap. Now, those have their place in the regular carving and stuff, but they were kind of a preempt to this new laser picture module where we can actually laser engrave a photo. And when we get back, we're going to have Burl show us a couple of samples that he's done of a laser engraved photo. And again, it works with the maximum power and a minimum power for that shading, uh, your feed rate speed, and you can raster, you can do that hatch pattern, or you can work with selected ve vectors if you have your own pattern that you're going to run uh, and things. Uh, you can dither the image. Uh, for those of you that may know anything about lasering, uh, uh, dithering is kind of a black and white uh, polka dot type pattern uh, for the laser to fire and not fire. Uh, when Burl and I were experimenting, because it's all new when we were experimenting today, we like the non dithered version, but uh, it's something that uh, we're going to have to uh, learn and grow with and, and experiment with because, again, this is new. It's not out yet. So these are the two new modules that allow us to work with now images, such as this beautiful little dog here, uh, being able to laser engrave that image on a piece of wood or material and things, uh, where there be an image of your loved one, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, something, you know, just a memory or what have you. It's going to be great to be able to do that with this new module. And, and hopefully Vectric will announce uh, its release uh, uh, here sometime this year. Uh, but right now we are able to do our 2D graphics with our profile and pocket cut. And soon, very, very soon, we're going to be able to do uh, a lot, lot more with our 6 watt laser. So let's get back to Burl. Uh, now that we've talked about that a bit, let's get back to Burl here. Uh, Burl, are you still with us there? Oh, certainly am. I'm not falling, falling asleep here. Uh, thank you, Laney, for uh, doing a little bit of the software. And 
it is exciting to uh, that that that's that's doing that that's your, uh, I, and I know you got feedback, bro, but you're sounding fine on this end. It, okay. I, yeah, it's so. it's hard to talk when it's I'm, I'm shouting shouting, shouting back, back to myself. myself. Uh, uh, but it, it is it's a it's a cool feature where you can go from those lights and, and darks. Um, with, with Laney and I were both on the software this afternoon, figuring out our post processor. We didn't think we was actually going to be able to show you anything, but we've got uh, a couple things and the dog is running right now. It's almost finished. So let me flip the camera so you can see some of these shots that uh, we ran earlier today. Absolutely. And Burl, uh, and I hope, uh, your I hope my picture. Yeah, your audio and your photo is fine. So, uh, all right. Here's a picture. This is my daughter. I don't know if I can show you. One yep. of the things that, and, and literally, this is this is uh, um, the last, the last two, hours two hours we've been playing with it. What we, what we found, found is, is you turn, turn the power, power down. So what you can do is you can control instead of um, from like 100% to zero, being your lights and your darks. Um, I'm going to turn the fan off to this finish here and get it out of our way. There you go. And okay. uh, so from the lights and darks, you can go from like 100% power down to zero. But what I found is that one was about 80% to zero. And I started on our dog here and I went 50% and you could get a little bit better. And I made the, the picture a little bit bigger and this just finished up. Now you have to apologize. That line was where we turned it off uh, and started it back up uh, in the pause because of when you pause it, we're still working on the post processor. You literally have to shut the spindle off. So before I could hit pause and then hit the spindle back on, it obviously went over that line. But this is actually 30% to zero. And you can start seeing some of that photo like images coming out in that dog. So a little bit of play. And that was literally from uh, Lanny, when did we get off of the phone about three or four this afternoon? And we didn't think we was going to have anything. And I was able to play with it a little bit more to have, um, you know, a little bit of that, uh, those images there. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm flipping back and forth to the different screens and stuff. Uh, but the, um, yeah, we, That's okay. we were just, uh, so those two f runs that you saw there of uh, Burl's daughter and the dog, that's kind of our first little test runs with, uh, this new module. And so there's going to be some fine tuning and getting used to the power settings and the speeds and stuff. And of course, at the beginning of the video, I asked Burl to pause the unit so we could, uh, talk about our little shop tour. And of course. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, <laughs> there's a, there's a cute little line there, but yeah, I line through it turned out great. Other than that, it turned out great. Now it did. Um, yeah, bro, we've got some questions about the laser. Uh, that's our, our hot topic okay. tonight. And, um, the, uh, if we could, if we could just take a bit of, uh, these questions, let me get back to them here. Um, I had a gentleman. Uh, say that, let's see here. Can you laser uh, using the fourth axis? And I believe you can. I think you can, but I have not done it yet. Um, but I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to on our material. What do you think? Yeah, yeah you certainly could. We can, we can wrap, you know, you can route on the cylinder of a, of a project on the fourth axis. So there's absolutely no reason you couldn't laser on that uh round round part with the fourth axis when it comes uh once again like the fourth axis and we're going to do a session on the fourth axis i don't know if it'll be next week or next couple weeks or something we're going to do on the fourth axis um it does add some complexity but one of the coolest things with it it adds some uh really really the ability to make some unique things with that fourth axis so you know turning that uh, laser on its side obviously you don't care uh, and pointing it at those cylinders and, um, you know, creating those images just like what you do down on the on the tabletop. Uh, I, I believe you could. There's there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't couldn't do that. Absolutely. And uh, the um, how long did it take to do the dog, bro? Um, literally, that dog is about a three inch by three inch. Um, we literally I started that uh, we were late getting ready for the show. 
So that was five minutes till seven and it was done. So that was about a half an hour, about uh, half an hour, 35 minutes. Oh, I can't hear you. I had my mic muted. Uh, Burl, <laughs> I know what our feedback is. It's the team viewer that you're hearing an echo back on. Uh, I think that's yeah. what it, are we can shut that off. I was about to say, are we finished with that? Yeah. Uh, there we go. Okay. Now, uh, another, another good question is um, how long uh, would you, uh, should you expect a diode laser to last normally as far as uh, a runtime? I'm thinking, what, 10,000 hours or more? Well, the manufacturer is telling us that five to 10,000 hours. Uh, obviously, we've been producing these now for a couple of years. Uh, I know we have, and I'll, honestly, we've had a couple of failures with them. Um, I think part of the manufacturing has got a little bit better. I've actually had a customer that replaced the diode. Uh, I've got a couple of here, units here and some replacement diodes. I just haven't taken the time to do it. I know Laney wants me to because his, uh, his uh, uh, six watt laser is up here and we need to get it changed um, and get him another one so he can do some more playing with the laser. But um, yeah, that's what our manufacturer is telling us uh, on that is uh, five to 10,000 hours. Uh, obviously, lasers are one of those odd things. Uh, power, time, all that is comes into play. So, you know, if you was running at 10% power for, you know, all the time versus 100% power all the time, those hours are going to uh, obviously change. Uh, the stronger you you uh, run it, the shorter it will, will last when it comes to that. Absolutely. And uh, so now, Burl, uh, Mark Manal says, um, I might have to buy a laser set up for my 2440. Mark, uh, stay tuned. Uh, to the end of the video, we have two major announcements, and these are big announcements. This is the record-breaking announcements for Digital Boy Cover. So stick to the end of the video, and you just might find yourself with a laser. You never know. All right, we're going to have two announcements at the end of the video, you guys and girls. Stay tuned for that for customers and for non-customers as well. Um, the I want to go uh, back to uh, with our laser questions. Um, William Wallace, I answered yours in the chat, but with Burl, as he was talking about with being able to wrap on the fourth axis, even in, you, you would be able to, you know, engrave on something like a pin, you know, if you turned a pin on the fourth axis or something like that with those wood turnings and stuff. So that would be, um, uh, you know, a, a good time and all now the, let's see here. Does the six watt laser pull a lot of power, bro? Um, it, it really does not. These lasers run on, um, they'll run from uh, 12 volt to 24 volt. We put a 24 volt on the, uh, actually both of our units now have 24 volt power supplies, um, really about three amps. Um, so they, they don't pull a lot of power when it comes to that. Uh, three amps of 24 volt power. Uh, we run the fan on that and also the diode itself. You got yourself muted there, Laney. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, the <laughs> last question that I have, um, uh, thanks, Antonio, for that question. The last question I have is, can you laser or can you paint or lacquer the board first and then laser the picture? You probably could. Uh, just like when um, I'm working with uh, glass and stuff, I have to coat that glass like a mirror, like the back of a mirror. I have to coat that mirror before the laser will do it because the laser is just like our eyes. What it can see through, it can't cut, right? Just like the same thing with Burl. Is that true? Our laser, it, the blue laser is right. just the human eye. So if it can yeah. see through it, it's not going to engrave it. Uh, so Well, and that brings up a good point. I'm glad you, you brought that up. The six watt laser is limited. And I want to state that up front. Um, we sell 60 or 90 watt lasers. Those 60 or 90 watt lasers, they're capable of cutting through quarter inch, even I've cut up to three eighths or half inch, depending on the power of it. Um, the six watt laser is not going to cut a quarter inch you know, piece of wood. I don't expect that. Uh, it's not going to do it, um, but it will do what we're doing here very nicely. Do some wood burning. I call it more of a wood burner where you can literally cut on wood. You cannot uh, cut or frost clear plastic. You can on larger units, 60 or 90 watt 
we can cut through probably three eighths inch thick um, acrylic clear plastic. You can't on the six watt. So it just, there is limitations to it. Um, as far as how thick it can cut out, you can go over the same cut. Um, I wouldn't, I'm sure a 16th inch balsa or something like that, there is things that you can. I know Laney has done some foam cutting out with a six watt laser and it does a very good job on that. So it's almost one of those things you kind of have to test the medium to see what it is capable of doing. But, uh, you know, before you buy, uh, buy a six watt laser and expect to in, engrave on mirror or glass, um, you know, it's, it's probably not going to do that. I know there's a lot of products out there that you can spray on stuff and, you know, um, laser on it and it will leave a film on there. I've not experimented with them, so I can't tell you if the six watt is capable of doing that or not. Um, it's one of those things, if you've got it one particular area, I know a lot of people with the larger machine, uh, larger lasers will do like the uh, cups and stuff like that, um, where you actually, it has a medium on it, such as a paint and then, um, or, or anodize or something that's on the surface that the laser will actually burn off and give you that clear, uh, shiny material, metal, um, you know, the product that's behind it. Um, once again, it is a six watt, a six watt laser. So I don't want to downgrade it uh, by all. Uh, it's fabulous. Um, but I do want to warn you that, you know, if you're expecting things that some of the bigger ones can do, um, you know, check, ask those questions or let us test it for you and see what it's capable of doing. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, everybody's asking the question about lasering on glass and Burl has just made that that point. And Burl, uh, one of the things I think you were trying to think of is uh, there are two laser, well, two that I know of. There's a lot more, but there's two laser dies that uh, you yeah. can put on yeah. your uh, metals and or glass. And the laser actually etches those dies into the material. Uh, and, um, I don't know the name of them off the top of my head. Uh, yeah. Jason Allen, if you're in the chat room tonight, uh, throw those. Names <laughs> up I know you're using yeah. them all the time. have to ask our customers but, to answer some of our questions. Uh, we got it. We do have good customer based uh, on Facebook. Um, when you have questions, if it's something that we've not tried, um, I've got customers that tell me I've done it and it does it. So, um, you know, we all learn together. Absolutely. Now, uh, two important questions. Uh, the first one is. What is the warranty on the laser? What is the warranty on the laser? Well, we, we warranty uh, all our product for one year. Um, you know, as far as warranty on, on the laser itself, uh, obviously, you know, we, we do trust our customers when it comes to that. Uh, it is a very fragile um, item on that. Uh, as far as what the manufacturer warranties on it, uh, when you get electronic part, uh, honestly, most of them won't warranty it past the day it steps out the, the door. Um, we will warranty our products um, on that. We do everything for one year. If, unless you're uh, doing something crazy where you're running it 24 hours a day, uh, every day, then, you know, we might question that. But if you're using a regular, uh, like, a you know, what most of our customers use the machine, then uh, we'll stand behind it for a year. Absolutely. And one of the things um, that uh, that that everyone's asking is, uh, does the laser use the Planet CNC TNG software? Yes, the Planet CNC TNG software is our controller software for our DWC units. Uh, so the six watt laser, whether we're using the laser, the new laser module that's going to be coming out to Ventric, and I'll talk more about that in just a second, or we're using our existing laser post processor. When we create that tool path, that toolpath file is run in the Planet CNC TNG software uh, for our newer units and CNC USB controller software for our older units. Uh, and uh, that software is running that toolpath. So yes, to answer that question uh, for uh, you guys and girls that have asked that, uh, that is it. Um, now, the uh, software that Burl is showing- There's on a picture of the dog. Yep. Yeah. The uh, That's a picture of the dog that we ran and physically on the TNG. Yep. And so that's the Planet CNC TNG software there. And the um, question that uh, I keep passing up, and I'm not doing it on purpose to uh, whoever asked it. Bear with me a second. I, I lost it. The um, Question, when Burl was explaining what the laser could, you know, what you should or could or could not expect with the laser, 
one of the things is uh, I want to mention is the things that it can cut on. So uh, like with me, Kaizen yeah. foam, making those foam inserts for toolboxes and stuff. Uh, I've, I've had good results with cutting that. Uh, leather, actually engraving on leather material yeah. and stuff. Uh, cutting uh, out uh, uh, thin materials like uh, poster board and things for you crafters and stuff. I've, I've done that well and all. Uh, engraving on our woods, uh, MDF, wood, hardwood, softwood, you know, plywood uh, uh, and things like that. Uh, as far as the metal etchings and all, that's where you're kind of uh, running into the limitations unless you're using some type of laser etching die uh, with that. Uh, but there's a lot of things that can be done with the laser. And um, uh, I will see if I can uh, find a link to some of the uh, pictures and samples of, of customers and all and see if I can uh, uh, show you some of those. But the, yeah, that's it. That was a good point on the leather. I've done that before and got some uh, excellent results on that. Bracelet. And I'm sure. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah that's uh, uh, good. Good stuff there. And I'm sure there's some other products. Um, that some of our customers have used. Uh, I can't think of them right off the top of my head. I know, um, you, know you know, some some foam, some styrofoam type stuff. Uh, I'm sure some of that uh, you can use uh, on that. Uh, I know in collared plastics, um, you know, the manufacturer tells us that you can carve and, and frost up some of the, you know, if it has a, a collar to it, because um, it'll absorb that light a little more. That's what laser is, just a light beam. And I've got two additional questions, bro. Uh, one of them is actually kind of an important one, uh, but let's go with the first one first. It's still important, but let's go with the first one. Oh, John Esther. Hey, John, how you doing, sir? Thank you for joining us. Uh, John Esther asked the question, um, when the new software comes out, when Vetric comes out with it, uh, all you're going to need besides the laser, is there anything else you're going to need besides the laser? Well, uh, your Vetric software, of course, with your, your, your digital wood carver units or your CNC units, that Vetric software, this is going to be a module. So it'll be a separate module that you will pay for a license for. Uh, and this module gets added to your existing version of your software. Uh, you'll be able to download and install that module, which will give you those two laser tools and things in that functionality. Um, other than having a laser, a digital laser, uh, that's all you're going to need. You, you know, a version of desktop pro or aspire. Uh, with that laser module. And again, uh, Vetric will be making the major announcements of, of how that's going to be distributed and sold on their website and all that stuff or what the cost will be for that module. Uh, Burl and I unfortunately don't have that uh, that type of uh, solid information on it right now. Um, well, and, and I did ask, uh, just to give you an update, uh, Laney, uh, I don't believe you were in on the phone or the email conversation there. I asked when it was available. And really, they're looking and... Uh, They've asked us before uh, to do testing on it. And unfortunately, we get so busy. Sometimes we don't have time to sit down and do this. And uh, they're looking for feedback, too. You know, the more feedback and uh, certainly from this show, uh, you know, we've got some good questions and, and feedback there. I've had a chance to play with it, um, which uh, unfortunately, until we go to shows, uh, we don't get to play with our software as much as we would like to. Um, we just need to give feedback. And that's what's going to push it. I know it's what pushes me as a as a manufacturer and designer when I got customers saying I want it, I got to have it, and uh, the excitement about it puts fire in, in that. And I know from this show, um, you know, we got to work out some bugs on the post processor with Vetric. But uh, besides that, I'm excited that I actually got to play with it and see exactly what um, it was uh, able to do, and some of those photographs and the control we have with it. Uh, I think it's going to be exciting. So. Uh, I'll try to do my best to. Um, oh, oh I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm just I'm I'm pumped up about it. I'm super excited because one of the main things that my customers with our laser and all they've been asking about doing photos, and I've been selling yeah. them. Hold off, hold oh off. yeah, you know because we, can, <coughs> you know, uh, in the software currently right now we can trace an image, create those vector lines, uh, you know that clip art image and yes. stuff, and engrave it. But now we're getting into different shading and stuff, which this module is going to be. Oh, awesome. just, I'm I'm super excited about it. Yeah, uh, it's a game changer. So I've got a very important question that uh, wanted to from Ed Nygaard. Uh, and uh, the question is, um, do you need to exhaust the fumes outside for our six watt laser? <coughs> well, if you've been around a larger um, laser, a 60 or 90 watt, that's a self-contained unit. And they require about a six inch duct to go outside. 
Um, I've been running this um, pretty well since for probably the last two to three hours, running all three of those uh, pictures and also the little design there that Laney had done earlier, our logo. He had some other work, but I think everybody was interested in the photos. So I ran those. And honestly, it didn't change the you know atmosphere in here. I could smell a little bit of, of you know wood burn smell. Uh, one of the things you can do is if you want, you can run the exhaust. Uh, but with the fan on it, it dissipates um, well enough. It doesn't change your, you know, around. Uh, I wouldn't want it in my living room, but uh, in my garage here, um, I could run it, I'd say, all day and not. Uh, it's not going to be like the, you know, the bigger uh, lasers um, that require, you know, exhaust on that. Um, sure. But uh, once again, I, like I said, I wouldn't have it in my living room or kitchen, you know, um, running, but uh, in my shop. Um, it's definitely bearable. Um, you know, I could smell a little bit when I come in and that was about two, two hours of running. If you're going to do much longer than that, you certainly could. The vacuum is right there. Run the vacuum, put a, you know, charcoal. I know different people have, have created a little charcoal or even the filter of the vacuum itself, uh, helps pull that out. I was just about to say the vacuum, uh, having the vacuum running with the laser helps kind of dissipate that, that smoke and everything. And, you know, if you're in a small shop, a small environment or whatever, you know, have your shop door open, uh, you know, window or something, yeah. you, know, if it, it, you know, but I have my big laser, uh, my, my 50 watt laser is uh, vented outdoors. You know, it's vented through a, like a dryer vent, yeah. a six inch dryer vent. Uh, and uh, if that wasn't vented, uh, then true. But the six watt laser, when I run it, I never have any issues with it at all. So uh, great question, Ed. I appreciate you. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Be sure to check us out next Wednesday uh, for another live broadcast at 7 p.m. Burl, thank you very much. Everybody, thank you for all your questions. Y'all have a wonderful night. Stay safe. Stay safe, everybody. Text and call.